this is an example of some of the signs you may look for when you're out in pursuit of the giant bluefin. We've got whales. These are all humpbacks and it's south of the vineyard. A lot of whales, a lot of birds. Indications are all right. We've got a uh, good bait source there. Good area to start, uh, start your trolling. The next bait we're going to deal with here is the mackerel. This bait's going to be rigged as a surface skipping bait and we're going to begin by inserting our wire through the belly section right through his mouth. Pulling the wire all the way through until we come to our hook. We do this by again using a double thread and tying an overhand knot. We're going to insert our needle and thread through the underside of the jaw right between his gill plates. We're going to push that needle straight through up, up through his nose, staying dead center, about an inch from the tip of his nose. Put our needle through the loop and pull it down securely. Pull it right down good and snug. Over the top and under and pull our first loop down. And before we take any more turns around the wire, at this point we can adjust the hook position, either pulling it further back towards the anal, anal portion of the fish or advancing it. Once we've determined that position, we continue with our finished knot. And again, four or five turns between wire and thread, always going towards the bait. Once we've completed that, we come back in front, under the wire, over the top, and back through our thread, forming a half hitch. Pull it down snug against the other loops. And we'll do that three times. And we have our finished knot. Just cut it. What we're going to do now is we're going to position that wire so it leads directly in the middle of his mouth, dead center. And we do it by one single stitch on the opposite side of the wire that our original loop was formed. Pull it down tight and cut it. As you can see here, our wire is against our original loop and the other stitch we put in now secures the mouth tight and the wire leads directly off his nose. Won't turn side to side in his mouth. Our final step here is to begin closing up his belly section and most important, his gill plates. Any fish that you troll as a bait should have his gill plates securely closed. This is one single stitch through the gill plates, overhand knot, pull it down tight, cut it. We're going to take a single stitch around the shank by taking our needle inserting on one side of the backbone and shank, pushing it right up through the dorsal side, and coming on the opposite side of the dorsal or backbone, and again coming through on the adjacent side of the shank. Once we've accomplished that, we'll continue to pull the needle and thread through and tie a simple overhand knot. That first, first half should be pulled down very tight and we finish our knot off. And just cut off the remainder. Now we're ready to, f to complete the final stage, which is sewing up the belly cavity. One of the reasons that I prefer to use single stitches instead of one complete length, which you may have seen in other rigging methods, is that I've had the hook pull through those threads, actually lost a fish and had all of my sewing thread tightly wrapped around the barb of the hook and the eye. That happened one time and from that point forward 
I use nothing but single stitches. It takes a little longer, but the end result is a hook that can pull through that single stitch and in no way impairs the degree of what I term again hookability that, that I might achieve. And our final stitch here is right in front of the hook itself so that we pull it down tight. This will keep the, the hook from turning side to side. And once that's completed, make our final cut and we have our hook bait.